So, drones are everywhere, or at least that's what the media has been telling us. If you look on the news and look all around the uh, newspapers, you'll see tons of stories about any time someone finds a new use, or whenever uh, something new comes up, it's a, it's a newsworthy event. But if you look out in the sky, they're not everywhere. You see, drones have yet to cross the threshold from being a cool high school science project to actually becoming an industry, and we want to change that. So we started this summer with basically a simple vision. Bring UAVs into the non-military world and make a commercial industry out of them. And we've been really busy. So over the summer, we've explored all of the different possible use cases. Well, not all, I should say, but from toys and recreation, photography and videography, agriculture, and even surveillance. We've flight tested a dozen different models, multi-rotors, fixed wing, as well as manned aircraft to see what it's actually like flying these uh, with other FAA certified um, planes. We've interacted with hundreds of different users, and we've actually built a number of models ourselves completely from scratch. So first, I want to show you a few of the different models out there. First is basically the very small toy type one. This is a Blade Nano QX. It's pretty cool, fun to fly, but really nothing special. It's just a toy. The second one is called the DJI Phantom 2 Vision Plus. It's basically a flying camera with an auto-stabilized 14 megapixel camera that can do anything that you want it to, really. <laughs> and the last one that I wanted to show you is actually one that we have built ourselves. This is the uh, UFLY prototype number two that we've been working on. That's an endurance focused craft that is actually best uh, suited for agricultural surveillance. So it can monitor 500 acres of crops with uh, an infrared camera and combine it all into one thing for farmers to uh, increase their yields. So that's all great and these are all cool, but really what do you do with it and why haven't these become an industry yet? Well, at first we thought it was the product. We thought that a lot of these products weren't quite good enough for people to uh, use. But from talking to people that have used them, they're actually really easy. That's not the biggest barrier for consumers. It, technology is going to improve, but that's not stopping them. Same thing with price. Lower is always better, but it's not so high that consumers aren't willing to buy them. The real barriers to adoption for these products are product interaction. Consumers that haven't seen or touched or used one of these are really afraid to drop sometimes over $1,000 on the internet without seeing a product. Second is training and support. They take a little bit of learning to learn how to fly these things and use them properly. And if something just doesn't turn on, they want someone there to help them. And last is repair. These things, kind of like I've demonstrated, can crash sometimes. And usually the damage is really, really easy to fix, but it takes a little bit of know-how. So having that infrastructure to repair them is very important. So we've developed a three-pronged approach to actually bring these to market. First is having a, so, a set of brick and mortar retail stores to get people over the hump and actually see this product so that they can use it and fly it themselves. Second is bringing training, service, support, and repair to the customers as well through these brick and mortar stores to let them know we're here to help you if you need it. And lastly is custom design and manufacturing. This is the long tail approach. At the beginning, we'd sell primarily third party products like this while we're building our own and developing them that we can then sell and market through our own retail stores. The next steps for actually furthering this model is first, establish firm relationships with third party suppliers. We're already in discussions with a number of different suppliers so that we can sell their products through our retail support stores, as well as offer the service support, parts and repair that's necessary. Second, we want to actually open test stores in a number of different test markets, primarily in the Sun Belt, California, Texas, Florida, to actually check if we can create the market that we want to. We want to create a brand new market with this. And lastly, is continuing the uh, research and development of our in-house models so that we can push those to market when they're ready. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your time and ask for any questions.